This timeline shows a slice of the entire geological timescale. This timeline runs from 900 million years ago on the left to 400 million years ago on the right. There are timescales showing MA, millions of years, across the top and across the bottom. The ranges of the major groups of organisms that live during this time period are shown here by these horizontal bars. This time scale encompasses the last few hundred million years of the Proterozoic and the first 150 or so million years of the Phanerozoic. The transition from the yellow-colored Proterozoic to the red-colored Phanerozoic is the Cambrian boundary, one of the most important markers in Earth's history. The Cambrian boundary represents the transition from a world where life was mostly, though not entirely, microscopic, to a world where large animals and algae dominated the world's oceans. Let's leave the Cambrian aside for just a minute and move a little bit further back in time to discuss what this timeline can tell us about what was going on in the world's oceans at the end of the Proterozoic. As you can see here, the end of the Proterozoic is broken up into two smaller time divisions, the Cryogenian and the Ediacaran. The Cryogenian got its name from the two major global glacial events, often called snowball earth events, that occurred during this time period here and here, where much of the globe is thought to have been covered in ice. Cryo means ice. The Ediacaran gets its name from the Ediacaran fossils themselves, which were first found in a place in Australia called the Ediacaran Hills. The division between the Cryogenian and the Ediacaran is the end of the last snowball earth glacial event, here. Before the Ediacaran, most of the life in the oceans was microscopic bacteria and protists, and small single-celled algae. During the Ediacaran, the fossil record shows us the first pieces of evidence for complex multicellular life. The most dramatic example of this are the Ediacaran fauna themselves. Bacteria, protists, and algae also inhabited the Ediacaran seas, alongside the diverse Ediacaran organisms. While bacteria, protists, and algae crossed over the Cambrian boundary, the Ediacaran organisms did not and that's a mystery that scientists are still trying to figure out. Once we get into the Cambrian here, in the time period that follows the Ordovician, the world's oceans are filled with things that you can re easily recognize as animals, including the ancient relatives are, of our modern-day starfish, clams, lobsters, as well as many other diverse creatures. This timeline shows the importance of the Ediacaran organisms. They occupy a place on this timeline between oceans filled mostly with tiny single-celled organisms to oceans filled with diverse animal and plant life. Trying to figure out how the Ediacaran organisms connect to these earlier oceans and to these later oceans is a major effort of paleontologists, evolutionary biologists, and geologists worldwide.